first fly I'm going to be tying in this series is the bloodworm, and the uh, materials I'm going to be using in these in this fly is red flexi floss, um, the marabou, red marabou, and also red thread. Uh, the hook I'm going to be using is a Camusan B110 grubber. Uh, simply, obviously, put it onto the vise. I like to seal out the hook. Uh, you can get right in there then, get used to that, but be careful of the point of the hook. Now, I'm simply going to start at the eye of the hook. Good half a dozen turns, secure the thread on, take away the waste. Now, the marabou is the first thing I tie in. Simply tear off, not a lot. A couple of inches of it. Just roll it in your fingers and then tidy up the ends. Now you're looking the length of the tail to be the full length of the hook from the eye to the back of the hook, right there. So when you're tying this on, it should be about that long. And you simply just pinch and whip it on. One, two, three, just to secure it. Take away the waste. Tidy up. You get your red flexi floss. Just tie it onto the side. Pull it into the thread. And then all I do is bind in these materials using the thread. I want to form a nice head. There you go. Bring the thread right back to that point where you tie the materials in. Now what I'm going to do is to try and keep the profile of the fly quite slim, fine. I'm going to wind all the way down, touching turns over the top of the marabou. Now the marabou is going to roll slightly. Uh, don't worry about that. If it starts to twist around the hook, just bring it back up. It's actually doing as it's told just now. It's sitting where I want it to be. All the way down, practically in line with the barb of the hook. And then I'm going to rib the flexi floss all the way back up, right towards the thread, and then cross the thread, two or three turns just to make sure it's secure, and then flexi floss, what it'll do, it'll stretch twice its length, so when you're trimming it off, and that says it's at three mil long, half of that, and it'll stretch the other half, and it should tidy up, it should be once you do touch and turns right towards the eye, it should disappear. Get used to the material. It's a modern material. You need the modern tying techniques to tie these materials in. Keep the pressure on the thread. And then what finish. There you go. Now I'm going to use some super glue. This is going to actually secure the whole fly. Uh, it'll last a lot longer, and what you'll get is a nice, obviously glossy shine off it. And the fly will actually go like translucent. The light will trans right through it, strong the sun will pass right through it. It will certainly throw the red uh, that you're looking for in the bloodworm, and that's the bloodworm. My next fly is I'm going to be tying the pheasant tail nymph and the materials I'm going to be using obviously is a pheasant tail but this one's been dyed lime green. Um, as you can see there's many colours you can buy in pheasant tails, bleached and dyed and uh, the pheasant tail is very good for representing buzzers, uh, it's one of my favourite materials. Uh, slight difference in I'm going to be tying this fly actually with copper wire, fine, very fine copper wire and it pays to actually use a ceramic bobbin holder. Uh, it doesn't snap as easy with the metal one. There's a wee bit of, uh, what I would say, grinding when you're winding. Uh, that's the right terms to use. But the ceramic is ideal for that. Now, the hook I'm going to be using is uh, Camasan B110, again, the grubber. It's a size 10. And with the wire, like normal if you're using thread, start at the eye of the hook and then start to wind down. Now, wind the wire, the length of the thorax, which is this area here. You're looking at probably a third of the body length of the fly. And then what, what you do is, get your pheasant tail, just 
straighten up the points. You must importantly straighten up the points. It's much easier to do that from the feather. Now you want about a good half a dozen to eight fibres. There's a point straightened up. Simply tear it off. Now what I do is off it to the side of the hook, do one turn and then I start to pull the fibres to that turn and then I do another one and another one. Wind, wind these turns out as you go around the bend, all the way around, right all the way down, take your time to that point there and then bring your wire back up. Don't worry about them being spaced out because wire to wire, meaning the hook to this wire, they'll slip unless you use an adhesive like I'm going to use a super glue. Just simply put it on all the way up, out to the eye. Don't worry about it. Now, I wind this way when I'm winding threads on, but when I'm putting on hero, like pheasant tail, I wind that on the actual opposite way. So I'm winding the opposite way all the way up, spreading the material as you go. Keep going. Don't worry if one or two break, don't worry about that. Just keep going. Right to the beginning of the thorax. Bring it right up onto the top. Now you're going to bring the, the bobbin hold around the back of the vise. Go once, twice, leave it there. Simply pull up. That's too long there, so just bring it up to make it more comfortable for you to hold. And then, using the spare piece of wire as your rib, bring it up through, all the way up, right to the beginning of your thorax. Bring your, your wire along the back, tie it down, and then encourage the material to lie on the top and then wind right down towards the eye right to the eye itself and then using the wire just build up the thorax the thorax shapes is normally around about like a, an egg type shape uh, but don't go crazy just an impression of that shape is as good than overdoing it at the same time I'm actually adding weight to the fly and uh, Personally, that's what helps this fly to work extremely well. Now you can see just there there's a broken fibre. Take that out with your scissors. Just snip it away. Okay, tidy it up. Now I've finished that off at the back of the thorax here. Now I'm actually going to tie off there as well. Just simply fold back the fibres, which is going to this is going to give you your impression of a thorax cover. Just flatten it down with your nail. Do one turn, then hold, keep the pressure on the wire, and then get your finishing tool. Come up, go one, two, three, pull it. Now, can you trim all this away? Now, you leave maybe about a millimetre, two millimetres of material hanging at the back. That will give you an impression of wing buds and, uh, and gives you the shape of the buzzer. And then, all we have to do then. Get some varnish, don't use super glue here, but use some varnish. Again, it's on a brush. I like using brush. Uh, I find it much easier to spread the varnish out. And if there's any excess, you can actually wipe it back off. Right around the thorax area. There we go. And that's the green pheasant tail. For my next fly, I'm going to be tying uh, a quilled dowel back. And then the materials I'm going to be using in the fly is, is the peacock eye. And this one's been dyed flame, very hot orange. And I'm going to be using some fibres off these feathers. Uh, it's a Chinese cape, dyed again, the same colour, flame. And the thread I'm going to be using, that's off the same colour. It's uh, a glow bright floss. I actually got it on the bobbin. And uh, this is number five. Uh, the hook I'm going to be using is a Camasan B110, size 10. So onto the vise, shoot it sit in level. Just simply start at the eye of the hook, line down, nice layer of thread. You can control the tons of thread by you keeping this on just now, this waste piece of thread, right to the point where you want to tie in your tail. And you can either break it off or trim it away with the scissors. Tiny up slightly. There we go. 
Now you want, I prefer to use these side feathers, they're very strong fibres in these feathers and uh, yeah, I just simply pull one out from the side. Now the best of the feather is at the top so I don't really want this stuff down here. So just simply pull it away, tear it off, throw it in the bin, or throw it in the floor. But don't tell the wife. And uh, simply all you have to do is, like I did with the pheasant tail earlier on, to line the points up, you just simply bring them straight out from the stem and they'll naturally let it sort of level out themselves. And once they're level or straight there, you just simply tear them off. There we go. Tail, length of the body. So that goes into your finger and thumb of your left hand. Just offer it right on the top, pinch and loop. Get it on. Just check it's okay. There's a wee bit of hair there, so I'm going to go back just to check that. Just push it out of the road. You'll get this in time flies, don't worry about it. Just secure it in out of the road. Again, just back on. Couple of turns, make sure it's not going to roll. Just have a look, that's fine. Now, you want to have a level body, and this will help as a good measure. And uh, what you do is simply trim, full length of the body there. Just leave it just now, it's a couple of turns, that's that'll hold it. Now the eye, the quill side is there, as you see the colour. It's a lovely colour, that's what you're looking for. Now I trim right in close to the eye, because that's the material I'm looking for. There you are, got the colour on it. And simply tear it off. Now you're looking for the coloured side of the edge, or the leading edge to the ceiling is, is going to be without the herald, the herald's at the bottom. And you'll see why. You just simply tie it onto the side, touch and turns, wind up, binding in the hackle fibres, just watch if they don't twist out of the road. Just keep going. There you go. Important that you keep this level because the materials will sit better for you. There we are. Now, this is quite a weak material. Now, do you need to protect this or if you're going to catch a few fish on it, obviously, uh, it needs to last a wee bit longer than maybe one or two fish. Now, you simply put a layer of super glue onto the body. Now, don't overdo it. You don't want it to seep right into the fibres. And then just tie right over the top. One, two, three, four, all the way up. Gives you a lovely segmented body. Just simply bring it across the thread, right up. Concentrate on tying that in. Turns right down towards the eye. You really don't need the scissors, you can break it off. You need a good half dozen turns or so to do that. And then bring the thread back up. There we go. And then, again, this is going to be a false hackle. Just simply, again, line up the points, tear it off. This is going to be right underneath. The length you want is probably the length of the body. Now, once you've got the length you want, just sit it underneath, bring your finger and thumb, your left hand underneath, hold these points. Now, I'm actually going to pinch and loop up the way. You just simply bring the thread into your fingers, hold it, bring it up, and slowly bring it through, and secure that. That turn in a couple of turns. Just encourage it to lay the way you want. Just have a quick look, see it's sitting okay, that's fine. And then turn away the excess. Just make sure the thread's out your road before you do that. And then build up your head. And then we finish. And turn it off. There we are. Just to finish the fly, again some varnish. Uh, at this point, don't worry too much about filling the eye full of varnish. Uh, you can clear it out with a dubbing needle all the way around. Get your dubbing needle up. Clear out the eye. And there we are.
for my next fly, uh, I'm going to be tying a duck fly pattern. Uh, the black early season versions are very good. Uh, the duck fly pattern is a style. Uh, it's just a matter of changing the colours to suit, obviously, the type of buzzer it's coming off. But early season, black and red is extremely good. They're very good. Um, the materials I'm going to be using uh, is a Chinese black cock cape, um, some red seals for and uh, an optional material if you want is the jungle cock and my rib's going to be silver wire and they are silver wire. The thread is I feel is very important and this fly, I mean, the size I'm going to be tying is a size 10 I'm going to be using quite a heavy thread, a 3 thread this is going to be uh, the colour of the body and I'm using the thread for that and the hook I'm going to be using is the Kamasan B110 so into the vice we go. We simply start at the eye of the hook, wind the length of the thorax, it's about there, trim away the waist, and at this point I actually tie in the rib. Uh, the reason I do that is to try and keep the profile of the fly very fine, thin, which buzzers are. And as you see, we're using the 8 thread, it covers really quick all the way around touch and turns and all the way back up right to the beginning of the thorax we stop there and then we bring the silver rib up all the way up to get in line with the thread simply bring it across bind it in back up just now and then simply just bend it and breaks like that Seals fur. Now some people struggle with seals fur. I feel it's quite stiff, quite strong material. Now I feel if you put it your finger and thumb and then just simply roll it and keep rolling it to end up with a ball. It's like something you would probably find in your belly button. Uh, maybe not that colour, but that sort of shape anyway. And then you simply off it to your thread and then start to spin it onto the thread using your finger and thumb and it will go in very easy. When you displace the fibres, uh, they tangle easier, they get, you can catch them much easier. Material fibres going straight is quite hard to actually push onto the thread so if you displace it and rub it in your finger and thumb you'll find it does much easier. And then using the seals first.